Hello, my friends. Welcome to day number 46 of 66 Days of Data with Nine. And today we are going to use what we just streamed earlier today. We're going to use flow variables in our huge Spotify data set. But before we do that, a few quick announcements. So first one, let me put on my nice Nine cap here. So um, first of all, I'm going to go to the Nine Ford Summit 2022, and I guess you should too, and here's why. Because at the Nine Summit, you're going to have the chance to have not only first-class training, but first-class training with Nimers, with people from Nime, data scientists themselves training you, and you can approach them directly, you can talk to them directly. If you have a question in any of the exercises, or if you have a question if a certain thing would work with what you just learned, then you can approach them directly. And for me, that was a total game changer when I approached it first in 2019. Plus, you will see a lot of cool things over there. You hear a lot of inspirational things. And the courses, for example, are for all walks of life. You can start at level zero, and they have even up to level four um, courses. So no matter where you are in your nine journey, you can participate in any of those trainings, and they are fantastic. As you can see here, no, here on the, on the site, we will be streaming live from the yellow carpet so to say, so make sure you like and subscribe to not miss out on the great NIME Summit. The second thing I'd like to, uh, to um, discuss with you, let me just quickly change that, um, is that since this week, since last Monday, I am now officially a certified NIME trainer, which you can see here, here. This means... I'd like to do some crazy stuff with you, with the audience, because at the end of the day, that's that's being a trainer without an audience is not really worth a lot. So here is my question to you. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you want to do some crazy stuff like an ask me anything? Should we build a complete workflow from start to finish together? Should we do 100 notes in 100 minutes or my top 10 notes that I use all the time or whatever? Just let me know what you want to do and I think about it and probably we'll do it. With these announcements aside, let's just quickly hop over to the nine block and see what today's task is. So let's just go here. Oh, maybe let's try it like this. Yeah. So you see on day number 46, return to the output table of the second group by note where we counted the number of tracks for each artist across all years. In a selected time window from year to year, find out the maximum number of years of activity for an artist and extract those artists that have been active that maximum number of years. Wrap it into a component. Flow variables here might be helpful. All right, so let me just show you what I did. So I already have done this, and I'd like to guide you through what my way of thinking was. So basically, we're talking about this little body here, about the time plots um, component I just created. So control, double click to open it. And here's what I did. So the data from here, from the column rename, comes in through the component input. The very first thing I do here is I create an, a table or a helper table, if you want, with two columns. One is called var start year and one is called var end year. And this var, var, at the very beginning, that stands for variable and it helps me to identify further down the road if this is a variable or normal tabular data. So why is that important? Why did we do it this way? Um, basically to uh, have an input because if you remember the task just said from year to year and this is how I do it. In tomorrow's video, just a small short teaser, we will parameterize this, meaning we will make it through an interface so the user can select it themselves. All right, so now they can say 1974 and 1991 are my entries that I have made here. 
So this basically creates a very standard table. And then we have this fantastic node that you will use a lot if you're working or if you start working with variables, because this one here is a table, as you can see from the little black triangle here. And this, we need a variable. So what we do, we just add the table row to variable. And what that does basically is it takes the very first row of a table and for each column it finds there, it creates a flow variable from it with the same data type and with the content from the cells. So if you remember, you see it here in the note monitor below, bar start year is 1974, bar end year is 1991. So let's execute this one. Of course, we do not see any preview here in the note monitor. So let's just right click and see into the variables output. And we see var start year is of type integer, holds the value 1974. Var end year is of type integer, holds the value 1991. All right, now that we have that, we can feed these variables into a row filter because we basically want to filter our data here. Let me just execute this so we can see it. We have 62,000 line items, nearly 63K. We want to filter it by the years we have selected. Don't forget 1974 to 1991. So how do we do this? We feed it into a row filter. That's a classical task for a row filter. Double click on it to see its configuration. And I basically entered some dummy numbers. We basically added the flow variables here in the flow variable tab, but let me first share a few words why it's necessary to enter some dummy numbers. If you don't do this, you will not have these fields here where you enter the flow variables and the same for the upper bound available. So if these were empty, you do not see anything like this. So I can show you. So if I delete this, let's look here. Oh, yeah, it's still there. Okay, but um, it, 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 it throws an error. So basically do yourself a favor. Always write some dummy numbers. It could be 100 to 1000. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day in the flow variables, here is where is the lower and upper bound controlled. And if we later on probably change the start and end here, you would see it. So we have entered it here into the integer cell, var start year and var end here. And you see only variables that would work here are available. So this is an integer cell, so it only shows me integer variables. All right, you also see the little remark here that says the in cell parameter is controlled by a variable. And we also want to include these values. And of course, the column to test here from our data set is the column year. So, okay, so let's just see 62838. And we have the year, the artist, and the number of tracks. Execute. And now we have 14,057. You see, it starts in 1974. Let me just quickly show you. Starts in 1974 and ends in 1991, just like we said. Okay, the very next thing we want to do, we want to group by. That's the next thing. So we group by artist and count of years active. So we group by artist name. And basically, here I just have a count aggregation on the year column. So how does the result look like? It just looks like this. So we have, for example, whom do we have? 10,000 maniacs have been active in that, in that defined range, 1974 to 1991. They have been active for two years. The two live crew in that range has been active for five years. And as always, this always refers to the Spotify data set. So if you, for example, see Tupac, I'm not sure if that's true, or other, other um, artists, because we are talking about when Spotify saw this data and used this data, basically, and how they labeled it. That does not mean it is completely true. All right, so we have these numbers here, and I also added a table view, because if we leave the component, we have an app-like overview. 
And I wanted to give the users the opportunity to exactly see this table here. Right, so what we see here, like 10,000 maniacs, account is two, and so on, and so forth. And if that was not added by a table view in the component, people would not be able to see it. We also, and that's very important, here we add our next flow variable, and it's an integer widget, and we call it var max years active. So variable max years active. If you remember, that was the task. The default value is one, but that will be overwritten. By the way, these widgets, let me just show you the layout you already know. We have the table view here, and here goes the integer widget. So let me just show you how this looks from an outside point of view. If we right click, execute and open views, then we would see our data app, basically. So let's just click on this. We see our table here. We see we can maybe show a few more entries per table page. And you see if we just go here, Bronsky beat, three years active. We could now see, please enter the max number of years your selected artist has been active in that range of 1974 to 1991. All right, so let's just say three. We take Bronsky beat here, close, apply settings temporarily. And we see we have reduced our values from 62 with the grouping now to 3,182. Of course, that is a different table than this one because this one had the year, the artist name, and the number of tracks. And here we have the artist name in that range and the count of year. To a certain extent, using these widget nodes, these blue nodes that we see here, right? These are already a kind of parameterizing this component. In tomorrow's video, we basically will do it a different way so that you can just right click on a component like you can do with any other node and say configure, and then you basically set it up. But there is one node missing that I don't want to skip. So we were at the group by, we had the table, we had the integer widget that basically in the interface creates the years that we want to look for. And now let's just look at the row filter. Once again, we have a huge use range checking, lower and upper bound. The lower bound in this case is not touched, but the number we have entered, the three, if you remember, are entered here as var max years active. So everybody else who has more than three active years in that previous table, will be filtered out. And that's basically what we hand over here at the component output into the main workflow. And that is where this table originated from. All right, so that was my interpretation of this task. I must admit, I find this text a little bit well, let's let's put it like this. I find it a little bit complicated. So maybe there are other interpretations. Other people have probably done it differently. That's how I interpreted it. And um, yeah, that was basically my way of doing things. We were using flow variables. Um, if we just look here for tomorrow, we see uh, another task that goes on with this. So make the previous component parametric by adding a configuration window where you can select the time window from year to year. And you can further parameterize your configuration window by allowing the top K artists to be extracted. Yeah, artists with the largest number of tracks in the selected time window. So we're going to change our component a little bit or adjust it a little bit. And we're going to parameterize it by giving basically the opportunity to right click here and have this configure button up and running and then we can basically make our settings there so this is what we're going to do going to do tomorrow in day number 47 of 66 days of data with nine so see you tomorrow take care and bye bye